Hi students, in this lecture, I am going to discuss relation between torque and angular acceleration. Let us see. Consider a rigid body. It can be any shape. For example, take a disc, which is in the plane of the boat. That means it is in vertical plane and axis is passing through the center and normal to plane of the disc. That means axis is horizontal. Okay. This is now axis. For example, if we apply force towards the center, if you apply force towards the center, then no torque is produced. Right? For example, if we apply force along the tangent, if we apply force along the tangent, then torque is produced. That means disc rotates. Okay. So I'm repeating. If we apply force along the radius, means towards the center, then no torque is produced. But if we apply force along the tangent, then torque will be produced. Here, one thing is a torque is because of only external forces. And again, in that, because of this radial force, means force which is along the radius, we can say towards the center or away from center. Because of those forces, no torque is produced. Now, torque is only because of a tangential force. Okay. That means torque, torque equal to Torque equal to, see, force is how much? If you want to generalize, let us take a rigid body like this. This is now axis. Focus one point mass at some distance r from the axis. This is now axis. And we are taking here one point mass. It's a mass is a dm. Take one small element mass dm. When this body is rotating, this point follows now subtler path. Okay. And we are saying that torque is because of tangential force. So it is now torque equal to tangential force. It is a mass into mass into tangential acceleration. That is a tangential force into perpendicular distance that is equal to r into r like this we have to consider each and every point mass and torque on that okay it is because of the external force that means now we have to integrate then see what we get integral dm in the place of at we can write r alpha into r it is now integration of r square dm r square dm into alpha okay and we are knowing that integration of r square dm that is known as moment of inertia of the rigid body about that axis this is now i into alpha so this is now net torque because of external forces. Okay. And we are knowing that because of internal forces, net torque will be zero. Right. That means net torque is only because of external forces. So this is now relation. Net torque is equal to I into alpha. Right. Let us now focus problems basing on this. See the first problem. Two blocks of masses M and capital M are connected by a string passing over a pulley as shown. The horizontal table is smooth. 
the pulley has a radius small r and the moment of inertia i about its axis and it can freely rotate about, the, about this axis. Fine. The acceleration of the mass capulum, assuming that string does not slip on the pulley. That means pulley is now rotating. Okay. Let us see how to start the problem. Right, first make the given diagram. So it is given small m on the table. And a string passing over a pulley. And this is now capital. Right. So we have to find now acceleration of each block. Given radius is R, moment of inertia is I. Now focus here free body diagram for each object. For each object, if we are taking for capital. It is a capital weight mg downwards, tension upwards. Let us take this as T1. See here, tension in this part and in this vertical part, both are not same because now pulley is rotating. So, tensions are different. So, earlier while discussing Newton's class, we have assumed that pulley is now smooth and massless. Right, that means pulley does not rotate. That means throughout the string tension was the same, but now pulley is rotating. Means there is a torque produced. Okay, so I am taking tension here T one, and here tension T two. Now we can write force equation for this block. It is mg. So taken down as a positive. Mg minus T1 is equal to M A. Okay. Equation 1. Next, coming to for small m, it is T2 is equal to small m into A. Right. Now, coming to pulley. Coming to pulley. So tension T1, it is downwards, which produces clockwise torque. You can see here because of T1 above this axis, this is having torque that is clockwise. And because of T2, torque will be anti-clockwise. And if you assume that, see here, capulum will move down, right? That means pulley rotates, pulley rotates, clockwise. That means net torque is clockwise. So if you take clockwise a pause two, then see what happens here. T1 into R minus T2 into R. So because of T1 tor torque is clockwise, because of T2 torque is anti-clockwise. So net is now clockwise and that is equal to Y into alpha. Okay, right. See here, number of unknowns, T1, T2, acceleration and alpha. So we have four unknowns. So far we've got three equations. So we require one more equation. See how to connect acceleration and alpha. So when we are taking the pulley, this is now string. For each and every point on the string, acceleration is equal to A, right? And if you observe acceleration on the pulley, on surface of the pulley, this is now tangential acceleration. Because if you are focusing on surface of the pulley, 
this point having acceleration along the tangent which is equal to r into alpha and here there is no slipping condition is there is no slipping no slipping means velocity of the contact point and the contact surface are same okay that means if you are taking a point on the surface of the pulley and a point on the string both must have same velocity then they do not slip right so same velocity means if we differentiate once we get same acceleration okay because they are starting from rest so here we can write at is equal to r alpha that should be equal to ac this acceleration of the block because each and every point having acceleration is a and that must be equal to at that is r alpha this is a fourth equation okay now substitute this in equation 3 then see what we get t1 minus t2 is equal to it is i into in the place of alpha it is a by r so it becomes i by r square see carefully i have taken this r this side i by r in the place of alpha it is a by r so it becomes now i by r square into a right let us take this as equation 5. Nothing but substitute, substituting 4 in 3, we get now this one. Now take here 1 plus 2 plus 5. Okay. Then see what we get. Minus T1 plus T1 gets cancelled. Minus T2 plus T2 gets cancelled. On left side, what is left here? It is only Mg right on left side coming to right side m a m a i by r square into a i am taking a outside it is m plus m plus i by r square okay that means acceleration equal to it is m g by m plus m plus i by r square okay so as we are solving this question for the first time we are making all these equations in fact we can get this answer directly because if you observe in newton's class of motion acceleration what we got so we got m g by m plus m right here only extra term is i plus sorry i by r square this is now extra term okay so mg by m plus m that is what we got in newton's laws of motion because there we have taken pulley it was not rotating okay but here tensions are different so they produce a torque so it is now rotating so extra term is i by r square so directly we can guess what is the answer right let us see next one. Let's see the question given. The pulleys in the figure shown are identical, each having radius capillar and moment of inertia I. Find the acceleration of block M. So again, same kind of question. In fact, directly we can say answer. But let us see once the equations. Right, first make the diagram given. So having here two pulleys. So one is capillum, other one is smaller, smaller and capillum. Okay. So assume that. See here what we can say. 
let us take capital M is greater than small m. That means capital M will move down. Okay. In that case, rotation of the pulleys, they will be clockwise, right? Clockwise. Now see equations how to write. Tension in this part of the string, take it as T1. Here tension, take it as T2. And here tension T3. Because the pulleys are rotating. Okay. Now take for MG equation, sorry, for capital M equation. It is MG tension downwards minus T1. That is equal to M into A. Equation 1. Next, coming to for this one. This is moving upwards, right? Moving upwards means T3 minus MG equal to M into A. Equation 2. See total number of unknowns. A is unknown. Next, T1, T2, T3. Three, totally four unknowns, right? And alpha also unknown, right? Next, equation for pulleys. Now, for this pulley, torque equation is for that pulley torque equation because having only rotation, the torque equation is because of T1, torque is anti clockwise. Sorry, torque is clockwise. Because of T2, torque is anti clockwise. Therefore, it is now T1 minus T2 into R is equal to I into alpha. I into alpha. Or you can say alpha 1. Right? Take it as alpha 1. Next, coming to here. Because of T2, torque is clockwise. Because of T3, torque is anti-clockwise. Okay? Because of T1, clockwise. Because of T3, anti-clockwise. So, net torque is T2 minus T3 into R equal to I into take it as alpha 2 equation 4. See number of unknowns acceleration T1, T3, T2, alpha 1 and alpha 2. Right? Next, we have to connect now acceleration alpha 1 and alpha 2. Again here, since no slipping, since no slipping, We can see at this contact acceleration because of rotation AT equal to R into alpha 1. R into alpha 1 that should be equal to A because no slipping. Now coming to here again at this contact if you see acceleration is R into alpha 2. and that must be equal to again A. That means from this to what we can say alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2, right? And that is equal to A by R. Substitute that now in 3 and 4, okay? Substituting that, then see what happens here. I can take R here, so I by R. It becomes I by R. And this will take R here, I by R. In the place of alpha 1, A by R, so it is R square, R square. Now take 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. See what happens. Minus T1 plus T1 gets cancelled. Minus T2 plus T2 gets cancelled. Plus T3 minus T3 gets cancelled. On left side, the only part left, that is M minus M into G. That is equal to on right side. On right side, M plus M plus I by R square. For this also, I by R square. So it is 2. Okay. Into A. Then A value. That means here also directly we can guess what is the answer. Right. It is 
Now only extra term is 2i by r square. Okay. Remaining as it is. That's why directly we can guess what is acceleration without writing all these equations. Only in the beginning to get more practice, we are writing these equations one by one systematically. Okay. Let us see next problem. Let's see the question given. A uniform rod of mass m and length l is kept vertical with the lower end clamp. It is slightly pushed to let it fall down under gravity. Find its angular speed when the rod is passing through its lowest position. Neglect any friction at the clamp. What will be the linear speed of the free end at this instant? Also find hinge reaction when the rod is horizontal and vertical. Okay. Let us see how to start the problem. So first thing given that uniform rod mass m length l kept vertical with lower end clamp. So lower end is a clamp. Means axis of rotation is horizontal and passing through one end of the rod. Okay. Now see what happened. It is slightly pushed to let it fall down under gravity. It slightly push it. Okay. So when it becomes vertical, when it becomes vertical, we have to find, we have to find here a linear speed of the free end. So when this becomes vertical. See what happens. So here we are taking there is no friction at the clamp. Okay. That means mechanical energy is conserved. If you are taking the rod and earth as system, mechanical energy is conserved. Suppose we are taking now this as reference level. Initially, center of mass was at a height of R real by 2 l by 2 now it is at a depth of l by 2 so center of mass has come down by distance l by 2 plus l by 2 that is l so loss in the gravitational potential energy mgl this is loss in the gravitational potential energy and this loss in gravitational potential energy converts into converts into kinetic energy because of rotation. And we have discussed because of rotation, kinetic energy equal to half i omega square. This is what we have discussed in earlier lectures, right? Now use that here, half i value. Rotation about one end of the rod. So I value is ml square by 3. Half I omega square. M gets cancelled. 1 L gets cancelled. From this, omega equal to 236. 6G upon L under root. Right? And once omega is known, since it is in pure rotation, each and every point, that means except the points on the axis of rotation, remaining all points are following circular path. Let us take this point as A. Okay. For that point, speed is now, speed is now, it is R omega. R means distance from the axis of rotation. That is equal to L. 
that is L omega, omega value 6G by L. Okay, that is equal to take L inside. It becomes now root of 6G L. Okay, that is velocity of the other end of the means free end of the rod. Suppose if the velocity of center of the rod, then we have to consider L by 2. Okay. Let's see what else we have to calculate in this one. Also find hinge reaction when rod is horizontal and vertical. Okay. We have to find hinge reaction. Let us do one thing. First calculate when rod is vertical because we got omega, right? When rod is vertical. So hinge reaction means force by the support, by the support on the rod. And we can see when rod is in pure rotation, center of mass is following now subtler path. See carefully. Center of mass following subtler path. It is now like this. You see how many forces acting on the rod. One is mg downwards, right? At this instant, mg. Next, force by support. That is, you can take it as upwards. Or let me make a diagram once again here. This is now rod. Forces that are acting on the rod. One is mg. mg vertically downwards force by the support on the rod okay that is upwards take it as f okay so here see what we can say center of mass following circular path okay and what else we can say here when we want hinge reaction, that means a force, we have to focus now force equation. And when you are taking the force equation, we are taking force equation for center of mass. Because center of mass is following a translatory motion. It is now subtler motion. So when this follows subtler motion, we have to focus who is providing centripetal force. So it is now here. F minus mg that is now providing centripetal force which is equal to mass into centripetal acceleration which is equal to r omega square and r value l by 2 omega square see how much we got it is 6g by l right that is omega square that means f equal to mg plus this is 3 times and L gets cancelled. Mg plus 3 Mg. Total value how much? 4 Mg. Okay. And you can see at this instant, this has no tangential acceleration. Because if you want tangential acceleration, you can see AT. AT equal to R into alpha. But what is alpha? There must be a torque, right? But if you observe about the point of suspension torque equation, because of mg, no torque, because of hinge reaction, no torque, and no force acting along horizontal, means along the tangent. That means at this instant, hinge reaction is only along vertical, that is equal to 4 mg. Okay. Now we have to focus hinge reaction. When rod is what when rod is horizontal, okay. Let us see where change comes. When rod is a horizontal, you can see center of mass of falling subtler path, right? See how many forces are acting on the rod.
So one is EMG vertically downwards. And you can see this MG is now along the tangent because center is a following now subtler path. For that path, this is now tangent, right? That means it is now along the tangent to the circle. Next, by the hinge force acting on the rod, one will be like this. I am taking as horizontal component is, take it as FH. And one component is vertically upwards. This may be vertically up or vertically down. It is our choice. Okay. See here what happens. We want to calculate now hinge reaction when rod is horizontal. First of all, calculate here. See who is providing centripetal force. First of all, Mg along vertical. This also along vertical, right? That means one component of hinge reaction has to provide centripetal force. So I can write here FH. Horizontal component of hinge reaction is providing centripetal force, which is equal to mass into centripetal acceleration, that is R omega square. So we need here omega square. To get omega square, we take energy equation. So here we have taken that loss in gravitational potential energy converting into kinetic energy because of rotation. Take same thing here. Loss in gravitational potential energy. Mg L by 2. So why L by 2? Initially, center of mass was at a height L by 2. Now rod is horizontal. Okay, it has come down by a distance that is L by 2. This is now loss in the gravitational potential energy that is equal to M L by 2 omega square. Cross check once. Mg, it has come down by a distance L by 2. Loss in gravitational potential energy that is equal to M into R omega square. R is L by 2 omega square. L by 2, L by 2 gets cancelled and M gets cancelled. Omega square is equal to G. Okay. Substitute that here. Or it is G by L. Omega square is equal to G by L. Now substitute that here. Okay. Then see what we get. When we substitute here, Horizontal component of hinge reaction that is equal to let me cross check here what I have taken. Wait, wait, wait. I have taken here. This is gravitational potential energy at loss that is equal to half i omega square. I have taken mistake. This is wrong. We are writing energy equation, right? Converts into kinetic energy. That is equal to half i omega square, half i value ml square by 3. Half i omega square. m gets cancelled and 1 l gets cancelled. Anyhow, 2 gets cancelled. Omega square equal to how much? Omega square equal to 3G by L, right? Cross check once. Omega value, how much we got? 3G by L, omega square. Now substitute that here. M, L by 2, in the place of omega square. 3G by L. It is now 3MG by 2. That is now horizontal component of hinge reaction. Let us now calculate component of hinge reaction along vertical. This force and Mg both are along the tangent. Okay. Then we have to write Mg minus 
component of hinge reaction along vertical this is now net force along the tangent which is equal to m into a tangential and at means r into alpha right that is now m into r value l by 2 into alpha and to to get this value first we require alpha value that means we have to take now torque equation since rotation is about the fixed point, about one end, take torque equation about same axis. So net torque equal to I into alpha. That is torque is about this hinge. Because of hinge reaction, there is no torque. Torque is only because of gravity. So mg into L by 2. That is equal to I into alpha, I value ml square by 3 rotation about one end i into alpha m gets cancelled one l gets cancelled from this alpha equal to alpha equal to 3g by 2l right let's check once it is 3g by 2l and once alpha is done just substitute here how much we get? Fv is equal to mg minus m into r alpha. r value l by 2 alpha value 3g by 3g by 2l. Okay. mg minus l gets cancelled. Next. It is L by 2. That means it is now how much? 3mg by 4. Right? 3mg by 4. That means remaining value how much? It is mg by 4. This is the vertical component of hinge reaction. If they ask what is magnitude, then we have to take square root of sum of the squares. Right, so like this, we can calculate hinge reaction. Okay, 